is John O'Dell. John Cat, can I let everybody know that you're my neighbor? Yeah. This is my neighbor. We just have to live a block or two from each other. And he is doing something on his own to be a work with our own community to be able to help improve where we live. John O'Dell, give a big round of applause, everybody. Thank you. Hey, Larry, thanks very much. This is great. And uh, a lot of great speakers today, a lot to, uh, uh, pretty high bar to, to overcome. But I'm just going to improvise tonight. I've got, uh, I've got some notes, and uh, Julie's going to be keeping an eye on me to make sure I cover everything uh, correctly. I'm going to start um, kind of off the wall. I'm with COS. I'm a regional captain for COS. And uh, right now I'm taking care of the South Shore down here in the West Bay, and part of the river parishes, and wherever else I can drive to within a day. And uh, anyway, um, I want to I want to talk about words mean things. Did anybody in recent memory that you remember who said that words mean things? I think it was Russian and Bob. And that's when I really started thinking about how that relates to what we're going through all the time. When we're working with legislation, when we're crafting a speech, which I don't do. <laughs> um, but one one phrase that that gets thrown a lot around lately is election integrity. There's another phrase I like a lot better because it covers election integrity and a few things beyond that, and it's the phrase election transparency. If we can see this process from beginning to end, and there's there's human human uh, participation in this process, it becomes transparent, and truth becomes a much more readily available uh, option. Um, another um, another phrase that we heard a couple of years ago, <coughs> well, four years ago, I guess. Uh, the 2020 elections were the safest and most secure. That was very carefully crafted. It didn't say the most accurate. Did it? Now we're hearing a phrase called paper. I can try not to pop it so much. Paper component. Okay? Meaning we'll have an election now. We're promised an election with a paper component. And that does not necessarily mean what we think it means in terms of paper ballot. It means paper behind a plexiglass shield that you can't touch. And you look at it and go, yeah, that's the way I do it. And it goes away. So there's your paper component. There are the types of promises. So we have to listen and, and perceive very clearly what our betters are telling us. The other term that gets under my skin is voting machines. They're not machines. They're computers. It's very simple. And it's not just one computer, or two, or three. It's many computers and servers and routers and and communication devices uh, that, that, provide, that afford many opportunities to, uh, to cheat, let's just be close to that, or to tamper with results. So, no more voting machines. They're voting computers. Let's call it what they are. Okay, no, I got that off my chest. We're going to talk about COS now. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. And, uh, just give me, give me the one-minute mark or the, the five-minute mark, and I might even quit real early for you. But anyway, a real quick review on uh, Convention of States. Our resolution is uh, that we're pushing back against federal overreach, and I think I was kind of implying that on my, my definition of words at the beginning here. I think 
the uh, federal overreach into our election processes is one of the most egregious, egregious uh, violations of, of our state sovereignty. And federal overreach is one, uh, fiscal restraint. I think we would all be two or three times richer than we are today if we had some fiscal restraint at the federal, state, and local level. And finally, of course, term limits for federal employees, officials, and members of Congress. And that's the sexiest one of all, and probably the hardest one <laughs> to get done. I don't know how, how we can turn that one back. But we know they're not going to do it themselves. So, Convention of States, though, on the bright side, we're one of the biggest and continually growing grassroots organizations in the United States today, even part. And uh, we have substantial resources. Um, we, have, we have courses that we offer for free in biblical citizenship, servant leadership, uh, all kinds of leadership development and so far. It, it's there for the taking. And um, it's just a matter of getting engaged. Uh, we try to have local meetings on a monthly basis. We have uh, over five million uh, supporters nationwide. I think Julie mentioned that. Uh, 2.65 million actual petition signers. Uh, among them are J.D. Vance, and whether you like it or not, Mike Johnson is also a signer of the petition. And, um, and uh, 250,000, quarter million volunteers, coast to coast. And right here, in Louisiana, we have 42,000 plus petition signers, okay? So we in, in the last three to five years, we've gone from passing this resolution with the federal overreach, the balance budget, the term limits. Uh, in 2016, we passed that here in Louisiana. And yippee, we got that done. We're ahead of many other states. We're one of 19 states now in the Union who have passed it. We need 34, and Julie went over that, 38 to actually pass an amendment. So that's kind of a, you know, a repeat of that information that I, I want to make sure we went through it one more time. So we've passed the resolution, and now what do we do now? Have you got that done? Aren't you guys done? And no, there, believe it or not, there are people out there who are trying to uh, it's called rescission. They're trying to pull that bill back. They want to kill the Convention of States resolution in the state of Louisiana and other places. Texas is another place that came up last spring, I think. And in Texas's case, they had a sunset clause on the Convention of States resolution. And uh, I'm not sure what the, what the status of that one is. But, we are constantly being pressured and pushed back on that stuff. So our job now is to work with our local legislators and to promote legislation that exemplifies what we call the three Fs. Bills that support freedom, bills that support federalism and states' rights, and fundamental human rights, fundamental uh, bill of rights types of rights. So those are our guidelines, and we've proceeded with that with some success in the last several years. Uh, most recently, Senate Bill 133 Presley, the Who Bill, that's been mentioned a couple of times today in this room. Uh, you know, uh, we're pushing against uh, pushing back against the World Economic Foundation, uh, Forum and the World Health Organization and so forth when they come down with their directives. Well, you gotta put on masks, masks, stay six feet away, whatever. Um, you know, we can push back with that. And we're one of, what, three or four states that have actually done that. And one country I know of, I think the UK actually did that too. Um, secondly, um, Representative Farman's bill, uh, 
providing for an annual canvas. Unfortunately, it got diddled with and didn't have, it's not going into effect until January 1st, so I'm going to for this election. But it's something that we supported and it passed. House Bill 6, uh, 763, Bouye, and that's federal dollars in elections, okay? So whenever that federal money goes into something, we're held hostage on some level or another. And uh, so some people call it the Fed bucks, like Zucker bucks. It's just uh, we, we are pushing back against it, which I think is, is great. Also, I got an update on, did you do the Susquehanna poll? No. Uh, okay. You're using the uh, Trafalgar poll? Okay. Yeah, the most recent numbers that we've got <coughs> come from uh, Susquehanna, and this was done in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, 38% Democrats, 37% Republicans, 18% independents and 7% non-affiliated uh, people. Okay, and on based on that demographic sample or party-based sample size, 88% of all Americans support term limits for career politicians. And this this poll is was taken between September 23rd and October 1st. Very very fresh stuff. 71% of Americans believe additional limits on federal power are needed. So federal overreach, okay, right in line with our principles. 68% of Americans back a meeting with the states to propose amendments to fiscal responsibility and limits on federal power overreach. So they're with us on that. And keep in mind, this is bipartisan. Includes Democrats and Independents. 59% um, of Americans and uh, you uh, legislators out there will like this. 59% of Americans trust their state legislators more than the Congress. So that's that's a good number there. Now here's the clinker for me. 86% of Americans feel confident about voting. Now, I'm not really sure what that means. That I'm confident that I can walk into my polling station without being threatened or intimidated or shot at or whatever. Or does it mean I'm confident in the system? I don't know. But I don't think we can assume too much about what people actually know and understand about the voting system. Um, so moving forward, continuing to move forward with our legislation and so forth, um, I do want to bring to your attention that Convention of States action is, is very focused as we move forward in our relationships with our affiliated partners, with the people who have been in this room today, in the hallways, uh, people like uh, Chris Alexander and McCag, Louisiana Citizens Advocacy Group, uh, James Crumley, and Acadia uh, Patriots, Convention of States, of course, Julie, uh, the Louisiana College Republicans, Louisiana Power Coalition, Louisiana Republican Assembly, yay, I got a table out there, Blair and the gang, uh, Susie Labrie, Louisiana Sunshine, she's out in the hallway. Uh, Paige Lowry, Moms for Liberty, East Baton Rouge, Sylvia James, and Redmond. I also want to mention Margaret Saison, who, who really, Julie reminded me tonight, that she was really kind of the, the mama bear that brought all of us together, and we're now rowing in the same direction. Uh, Derek Gout with Restore Liberty, Hollis Day, Restore Liberty, Louisiana, Marina Fizzolato, we the people by you community. Boy, there's an active group. Uh, Adele Shakerman, we the people of Northwest Louisiana, and Martha Huckabee of the Women's Republican Club of New Orleans. So we what we are doing as we go forward with a legislative strategy, with shared values, with all of these groups and more who, who are not represented here. That we're going to coordinate more 
and synchronize more with our calls to action as needed, as things become important, because we, we are noticed, we're on the radar, and people are paying attention, and we're able to respond quickly, sometimes within hours, and uh, the impact long-term is great. So in closing, Convention of States, it, it's not a tsunami that's going to come in and scour the landscape and start everything over. It's, it's going to be a glacier that's going to slowly scour the landscape. And maybe not very selective, but we're in it for the long game. And we offer a solution that's as big as the problems that we're having right now. And if we have to address it one amendment at a time, then by God, that's what we're going to do. I want to thank you all for your attention tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank God for being here. so much. Before we bring our next speaker up, I want to talk to you a little bit about responsibility. You know, one of the things that I that kind of makes my eyes glaze over or roll back in the back of my head sometimes and get a little frustrated is, you know, I hear from a lot of people, I get a lot of feedback, not that part that I don't like, but I actually love the feedback, but a lot of times I'll get people come up to me and they repeat the same narrative over and over again as the last 10 people. We are responsible for what's happening in our country. And part of our problem is that we are guilty of repeating the narratives and falling into the same traps that they do as they spread the narratives. We need to take responsibility and be armed with facts, be armed with information instead of just being able to repeat the narratives, you know, Joe Biden's got dementia, Kamala Harris is communist, and all that other stuff. We need to take the responsibility to always have facts in our back pocket, our side pockets, you know, our breast pocket, our backpack, because without facts and without the right information, and all we're doing is repeating the narratives and the news stories, we don't get anybody else listening to us. Instead, the left and the people who don't like us and, and the people that would probably like us and would probably even vote with us, we lose a lot of them because they go, yeah, those guys keep talking about this. The, 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 there it is. We can be just as guilty as they are and that's why we always need to listen to other speakers like John O'Dell, like some of the people we've had here, to where we can always gather and have some of that information in our mental storage banks to be able to fight the good fight to be able to save our country. 